Alhamdulillah. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh to dear brothers and sisters in Islam and in life in this wonderful, wonderful, clear uh, air world of which we're now living in. Welcome to Ramadan Reset. Um, and it's seven days into Ramadan, subhanAllah, the a quarter of the way through, who can believe it? What have you, what are we, what have we achieved in ourselves? What have we changed? What have we looked at? What are we working on? Because this is where we have to dig really deep. And um, somebody, there's there's actually no link here at all because my brain's not working. So that whole dig deep thing, it's not a BBC link, it's nothing. Tez is going to be absolutely crying with laughter. Uh, my guest today is te comedian and actor Tez Ilias, famous for Live at the Apollo, Man Like Mo Bean, uh, many other things besides as well. And definitely not an activist, might be a socialist. Uh, he joins us now from somewhere in the UK, and he's going to be talking about gratitude. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Wa alaikum assalam warahmatullahi wabarakatuh, sister, and everyone who is seeing this around the world. Uh, yeah, assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum assalam. Listen, um, hamster, where did that come from? Let's just get that out of the way. The what? You're called a hamster. Oh, oh, you called hamster. Special, in like special. <laughs> so in Man Like Mobin, my character eight uh, is a is a very special guy. Um, he's quite simple. He's, he's the sort of person that everyone has one of these people in their friendship groups. The sort of person who's a liability, doesn't understand anything, and is kind of just living in their own world. Um, I, and so and so Mobin nickname nickname him nicknames him his special needs hamster. Uh, and so, and so that character is a special needs hamster, not Tez Ilias in real life. No, no. Even though I might look a bit like a hamster right now in that I'm cute and furry, but apart from that, that's where that's where it ends. The comparison. I'm going I'm to write down. I'm going to make a note here to talk about vanity and humility um, as as kind of watchwords for myself. No, and, and, and sarcasm as well. Sarcasm, okay, yeah, okay. Wow, we're yeah. calling each other out here. This is lovely. <laughs> it started really well. Thanks a lot, mate. Bismillah. Um, I've met you uh, quite a few times um, at different events, but where are you based in the UK? So I was born and bred in Blackburn, uh, and that is where I'm currently based, living with my mama, which I can tell you, alhamdulillah, is the blessings of all blessings. Ordinarily, I come home to Blackburn for a few days at a time. Um, this is where I'm based. This is where I pay my council tax. But I'm always on the road. I'm all over the country, all over the country, and all over the world. This year alone, I was in the south of France in January, Dubai in February, Australia in March, and then I'm quite often in London. I'm in Edinburgh, all over the country. Uh, so when I come home, it's a few days at a time, chance to reset, and then I'm off again. Whereas this time now, I've been at home for just over six weeks because I went into self-isolation a little bit before everyone else because I've just come back from Australia. So I thought it was a sensible thing to do. And I'm just grateful that I'm here with my mom, my mom who like every other Asian woman of her generation just wants to look after and spoil her son. And who am I, Lauren, who am I to stop her from doing that? Is she, are you fulfilling her dreams right now? Well, if her dreams are to look after a man child in his 30s uh, yeah. by feeding him and 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 you know taking care after him and stuff then yes she is absolutely living her dreams right now Mashallah. can we can we just make it what's your mom's name let's 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 everybody out there make a, a quick dua you, you can call name? you can call her sister her name is gul Badan. you can call her sister gul uh, so yeah, please do the wa for my mum, sister oh, Gul Badan. Oh, Allah, please bless Sister Gul with the patience and the sabr, and reward her for all of her sacrifices uh, when it comes to uh, looking after a man child and everything Ameen. else. Amen. 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 May Allah grant her jannah without reckoning. <laughs> Amen. 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 There was there was a couple of weeks ago. My mum came down with a bit of a temperature for a couple of days, and you know, in this in this heightened time, we 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 feared the worst for those couple of days, thinking, "Oh my God, it could be it could be that it could be the coronavirus." And obviously, I was very worried about my mum. I love her to bits. There's no one I love more in the world. And then there's a part of me, a small part of me that you can't control, that part of your brain that doesn't shut off. Just goes, "Oh man, does this mean you're gonna have to look after yourself for a few days?" And I was like, oh. "Shut up, man. Mum's in it." But that's that voice was that just going, oh man, you're gonna have to make your own food, bro. And I'm like, bro, do, do you mind? Like, mom's not feeling well. And that's like, yeah, that's sad that for her, but 
what about you? <laughs> and it's just, I was trying to get this guy to shut the hell up, but it was, uh, it's, it's so funny what you, where your brain goes. But I was worried about her. I want she's to fine. Work. Also, she's, she's fine. She's okay. Alhamdulillah. Yeah, yeah. It wasn't, it wasn't yeah. that. It was just a normal, you know, just, just a bit run down from, you know, life. Probably looking after me. Probably. Um, and as for that, that, for that reason, I have gratitude <laughs> on, to her. Do the smooth link. Do the smooth link. Let, let's do the smooth link. We're here to talk about gratitude today. What's interesting, I think, about um, a wide community like the Muslim community is we have the ability to work in all different genres, all different walks of life. But when we come to Ramadan, we're all looking for a reset. And you've already mentioned that your home is your reset, your Blackburn home, um, probably your boyhood room, which you've never left. Bless your heart. I'm just teasing you now. Astaghfirullah. Um, but the reset for somebody who goes on tour a lot. Tell us about that. Well, it's interesting because, like I said, I spend so much of my time on the road living out of a suitcase uh, checking in and out of different hotels, sometimes staying with friends uh, when I'm in places where, I, where, where my friends are, have, have set up their own homes and stuff. But it is, after a while, it gets a bit tiring. You just want, sometimes you just want that sort of like peace of mind and stability. But I've chosen a career which doesn't really necessarily lend itself to that. And I'm very grateful for the career that I have because it's allowed me to achieve so many different things and, and meet so many different people, amazing people like yourself, sister. Um, but there is still a small part of your mind that just goes, oh, wouldn't it be nice if just for a bit, just for a bit, if you could just take some time off, just take an extended period of rest. And I thought maybe I could do that in a few years time when I've achieved a few, achieved a few things in work and, and, and made, alhamdulillah, uh, money as well, hopefully. And, and I can take a little bit of time off and reset before I launch back into work and stuff. But, you know. Allah, Allah, Allah is mysterious and, and far be it from us to understand the way he works. He has presented a test, a big test on the entire human population, not just Muslims, the entire world. This huge test, this coronavirus disease uh, that everyone from around the world can be affected by, uh, which, which we've seen. Um, and, and it has allowed me, though, the opportunity in this awful time to actually be able to be home for an extended period of time and have some gratitude for all the things and all the blessings that I have in my life. Yes, I understand my life isn't perfect and I have ambitions and I have things that I want to achieve that I don't have yet. But actually, Allah has blessed me with so many amazing, alhamdulillah, amazing things that this period is a time when I'm not off trying to chase one thing or the other thing or trying to achieve all these dreams I have in my head. That I can just sit back and be like, oh, wow, I live, I live, I've got a roof over my head. I have food every single day, any time of the day when I'm not fasting. Uh, I, I, have, I have a family. I live here with my mum. I have family around me all over the place in Blackburn as well. I have, Alhamdulillah, I have a network of people who really enjoy the work that I do. I have amazing friends that I can get in touch with any time in the world using this magic machine. Um, so, Alhamdulillah, it is absolutely amazing the period of time that we live in that all we're being asked to do in this horrendous time is to sit at home watch Netflix, communicate with our friends and just do shukr to Allah for the blessings that he's given us. So, yeah, I'm, I, I'm very grateful for that, sister. What would you normally be doing um, in Ramadan in other years? Is it a busy time for comedians? I, 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 I can't imagine it is for Muslim comedians or, or does it? do you just go to other festivals? Would you be traveling? Well, it depends what sort of comedian you are. Me, uh, Lauren, you know, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm on the mainstream comedy circuit. So... I gig all over the place, mainly, primarily in mainstream comedy clubs. And obviously, when we mean mainstream, we mean white British people, um, and and because they are the ones who most frequent uh, those establishments. And so that's what we'll be doing. That doesn't stop for Ramadan, and therefore my work doesn't stop. In the same way that if you worked in an office, unless you took that time off, your work wouldn't stop. So in that same way, comedy clubs don't stop running during Ramadan, and I will be busy. Um, quite often, maybe two, three times a week, going to these places and performing my work. Now, sometimes it means I am actually breaking my fast at a comedy club backstage, and even on one or two occasions on stage. There's been an occasion mm. where I have taken a glass of water on stage, put it on the floor, and I've told someone in the audience, I say, when it's 9.24, this is a couple of years ago, when it's 9.24 p.m., please let me know. 
and I'm doing my bit, and then I see this hand go up saying, um, you, you, you told me that when it was 9.24 to let you know, uh, just to let you know it's, it's, it's 9.24. And then I go up to my glass, pick it up, do my dua in my mind, uh, take, take the sip of water and then pour it back down. And then I explain to the audience what's just happened. And they're often very, very amazed. And, and quite often they break into a spontaneous round of applause, which for me, it seems a little bit patronizing sometimes, but for them, it's, it, it, it's an amazing way for me to share what I do my dean and the fact that it doesn't impact on my life in the way that some people think it does because of the things that they might have read and stuff in that i am a british um pakistani i'm a muslim i'm a proud i'm, a, I'm proud of all those identities i live my life i go to work just like every other muslim goes to work during ramadan unless they take time off towards the end and i'm here sharing sh sharing that with you and yeah it has happened where i have broken my fast on stage alhamdulillah what do you think the impact has been of your um, your activities as a comedian? And because you you're quite outspoken, I mean, I think of Hassan Minhaj in the states um, and yourself over here. You, you 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 challenge the mainstream to question their prejudices, don't you? I I try. Um, first and for foremost, I'm an uh, I'm I'm a comedian. I'm an entertainer. That is my job. I want to entertain the people that I'm speaking to, especially when I'm on stage. Sometimes in social media, the lines get blurred a little bit. But especially when I'm on stage, I want to entertain an audience. But the things that I find funny, the things that I relate to, were those comedians in the past who said something as well as entertaining an audience. Mm. And that was my biggest source of inspiration. And so the art and the entertainment that I create has been very much influenced by that. Uh, and so I can't help but have that reflected in what I do and what I say on stage. And what I want to do is entertain an audience. I want them to find me very funny. And if they are able to learn something or take away something extra from what I've said, then Alhamdulillah, that is also okay by me. Uh, okay, I've got a bit of a fan fangirl question now about man like Mobin. Um, so my husband was watching with me. He's like, I don't recognize any of those characters, okay? But I've lived up north enough to go, yeah. I recognise some of those characters. Can you just talk us through what what the what it, what the kind of scene is like in, in in Blackburn as for for Asians that that kind of you know diaspora of behaviour that you come across? Well, Blackburn just much like any other place in in uh, in the UK and across the world, of course, uh, is is full of great people. It's full of very funny people. It's full of very nice people, and it also has people who who misbehave, who are not very nice, who get up to all sorts of shenanigans that you know me and you would fr would would frown upon. And but those people are this, but but no one is any one person. We've all got multiple facets to our personalities so the person who might be out there doing things that are haram or that we frown upon maybe cr even criminal activity there are also people who are very charming and who are very funny and probably help their mum out a lot when they're at home and stuff because mm. no one person is truly evil right everyone has these multiple facets to their personality and so blackburn is full of these amazing characters honestly the asian population in blackburn has some of the best sense of humor that I've ever come across mm -hmm. in the whole country. My family is very, very funny. I am not the funniest person in my family. <laughs> my dad's a character. I have cousins, at least two or three cousins who are definitely funnier than I am. I was just <laughs> one narcissistic enough to get up on stage and get up, and get up in front of a camera and tell these stories. But Blackman and London is full of these amazing characters, these larger than life characters who are very funny, who are very sincere, who are very sensitive. Um, but also there are there are some of those people who misbehave and sometimes it's interesting to showcase that in um, because, because that is real life and art has to reflect real life. And so if you come from a background, if you come from an area where this with this sort of thing might be prevalent, then it's important to show that. I mean, we see that in hip hop. We see that in, in a lot of uh, art created by the African-American community, uh, including hip hop, of course. Uh, and we see that reflected in films and, and comedy as well. Um, and so we, uh, Gus Khan, who created Man Like Mobin, he definitely wanted to show that, that this is a community where some bad things might happen, but it's also full of people who are amazing, funny, family-orientated, just like any British people and anyone else around the world. 
Um, I want to take just a moment here to uh, remind you, brothers and sisters, that we're bringing you this by Watan Charity. And uh, Tez Ilyas has agreed to join us today by the grace of Allah because he's interested in, as I am, supporting the lives and uh, survival of Syrian refugees. So please do have a look in the comments if you're thinking of where to send your zakat, if you're interested in helping families with food supplies and hygiene supplies and tents and uh, clothing that will keep them going. You can either make a small contribution or a large contribution to my Just Giving page, which will go to Watan, or you can go to the link straight to them and invest in a food basket for the sake of Allah. So thanks again, Tezilias, for, for joining us. I mean, what an amazing cause. Alhamdulillah, shukrullah, and this is how we purify ourselves. What, what talking about purification? I'm really interested in the uh, in the Asian characters portrayed because one of the things that's charming, and I've been to Blackburn and Bolton and Bradistan, Bradford, right, um, is that is that there is a kind of uh, earthiness to to the the Muslim community up there, the Asian community specifically, but that, but they will not transcend some manners. So, you know, there may be people who have slipped off to the degree that they go to the pub, but don't, but don't be impolite in front of my mother. And, and will take their mother a glass of water at night. So to me, that is like remnants of, of Islamic memories brought into a way of life that is, not, that is doing them harm or, or is taking them away from Islam. So it's a weird juxtaposition. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, I mean, we, we brought up in certain cultures, right? And, and, and religion imprints in our culture and culture ends up imprinting on religion. And so you end up with this juxtaposition and this mishmash of culture, religion, upbringing, environment that shapes a human being because a human being isn't shaped by any one thing. They're shaped by their upbringing. They're shaped by the culture. They're shaped by the things they read, the things they learn in the mosque, their schooling and the environment and the things they see on TV. And all those things end up shaping a person and they end up becoming a juxtaposition, not completely one thing, not completely something else, not completely a bad person, not completely a good person. We're all a mix of these things. And some of us are more of a mix of maybe something good. And some of us might be more of a mix of maybe something a bit more harmful. Uh, but it is very interesting. I think also a lot of the Asian community up north is very working class. And so you'll see a lot of similarities between white working class people and mm. Asian working class people. And I often said the only difference between white working class people and Asian working class people is that one of us loves chicken tikka masala and the <laughs> other is Asian. That is the yeah. only difference between them, right? And that's a bit of a joke, but it's like, but, but they're very, very similar. We might believe on, 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 a, on a higher level, slightly different things, but the way we conduct ourselves, the way we prioritize our families, manners towards our parents, they're very, very similar. If you look at gypsy communities, for example, the traveler community, some of their mannerisms, some of their family orientated behaviors are very, very similar to actually um, South Asian communities, Italian communities, Greek communities, uh, Latin American communities. So it's very, very interesting how working class communities around the world are actually are, are earthy, as you described, very, very similar in because they have because a the surviving in a world that is constantly because of capitalism, constantly trying to trying trying to bring them down. So they're fighting against that. And sometimes that manifests itself in harmful ways or even sometimes in criminal activity. But also they have this moral sense given to them by their culture and their religion that is guiding them and pulling them away. And so I think that's why sometimes you get this very, very interesting juxtaposition between someone who has who is full of these amazing mannerisms that they've picked up from their culture, but also is possibly behaving in a way that isn't acceptable because of the environment that they've been brought up in and, and the things that they need to do to survive that environment. It is, it is very, very mm. interesting. And we ask and we ask Allah to to bring us all closer to him. And of course, in uh, this blessed month, the gates of hell are closed and the gates of Jannah are open. And I was speaking a couple Ameen, of nights Ameen, ago Ameen. to Ameen. Alhamdulillah. I was speaking to Brother Yusuf Chambers and uh, Brother Mohammed um, from New Zealand. And we're all converts to Islam and we all, all had a link towards our journey in Ramadan. So what that means right now is not that bad doesn't happen in the world because it continues but we don't have that excuse. So that voice that was saying to you, uh, is your mom gonna be able to iron my shirt if she's in hospital, astaghfirullah, <laughs> which of course you pushed away. Um, and this you know, is our voice. In Ramadan, it's just us. Mm. And I think that looking in the mirror element, 
you know, that stripping away of what we normally cling to, that sense of ourselves is, is exciting and challenging. Are you challenged or excited by, by, by Ramadan? What does it do to you, Tez? Both. Um, I challenge myself to try and obviously pray more, to do more ibadat, to be more uh, to show more gratitude, to be more thankful, to be more spiritual, to maybe learn a few things, but also to challenge myself, my personality, my defects, my flaws, everything that I've picked up over the preceding 11 months, the lying, mm. the backbiting, the, you know, the, the, the small things that end up adding up and, and, and really um, having an effect on your character in the long term, because it ends up, these small behaviors end up snowballing and becoming your personality. So it's it's chipping away at that snowball and trying to get back to a sense of becoming just an all-round better human being, vis-a-vis -vis better Muslim, a better son, a better brother, a better nephew, a better uncle, a better friend. Um, and so if you can chip away at those bad behaviors, then you'll see that actually you have a lot more time, a lot more patience for all the people in your life that you would like to give time to. The thing about being on the road, of course, is 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 fadger there's so many excuses not to, not to practice things on time right mm. um whereas when you're at home i'm guessing your mum's on 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 your on your case uh, you know are you getting up do you do sohor does she make take care of you yeah time? so so in the summer uh because because of the way it is i don't i i, I even normal times i tend to sleep late so I probably on an, even on a, on a, on a non ramadan day i don't tend to sleep much before 2 a.m um, and so during so in Ramadan when it's been over the summer and obviously we, we're coming into spring we, Ramadan's coming back towards spring but it's still kind of early summer um, I tend to stay up for suhoor mm. read my fajr and then go to bed and then get up slightly after midday um, get up for zuhur and all those things and then go about my day um, uh, that, that is kind of my timetable during Ramadan I have to confess that uh, when it's not Ramadan I try and pray as much as I can, but Fajr is probably the one, the one challenge, the one mountain I have yet to climb the summit of to make a consistent thing in my life. And that is something, inshallah, that I will be able to carry from this Ramadan. Obviously, you make the intention every Ramadan to be able to carry forward the good practices and the good habits that you that you that you that you get. But and and, and this Ramadan is no different, inshallah. All the good habits that I form during this Ramadan, including praying Fajr every single day, I will be able to continue and take forward into my life over the preceding 11 months until next Ramadan, where everything is renewed again. Ameen, Ya Rabbal um, I'm going to ask everybody to make a, a, a really nice dua, inshallah, for everybody who struggles uh, you know, in Ramadan and outside of Ramadan with some of their prayers. Allah, make it Amen. easy, accept their intentions, Amen. you know, fill them with the joy of the deen and the love for you Amen. and and return and you you are the all giving, Ya Allah. So, so give Amen. Fajr to, to our brother and to all those who are struggling. Amen. Uh, I want to add as well, Tez, brother Tez, that um don't see don't see things as a mountain because if we if we put them in that context it's like what you said there and i'm sure you weren't aware of it is that it's fudge is a mountain to climb um i'll give you a really great a great well you don't even see the thing is if you're up at, if we're up at night it's much easier um sometimes we can oversleep but i was going to give a great tip then if anybody has has a has a, a thing of just falling asleep and going oh no in this fudge okay if that happens regularly do this Guaranteed it's going to work, bi'ithnillah ta'ala. Before you close your eyes, say, oh Allah, please wake me up for Fajr. That's it. I make the intention, Allah, please wake me up for Fajr. I have had birds tap on the window. Wow. Uh, yes. Allah. I've had weird noises in the room. I've had things. And you just sit up and go, oh, Fajr. There's no way you're going to sleep through it. No way. That's pretty cool. Way. That's really cool. Allah, okay. Right? Inshallah. Yes, um, sister, forgive me one second. I've got to go okay. find my charger. I thought I had enough, but my laptop, obviously going live, is draining my battery more than I thought it would. So, um, okay, put your camera off for a second. Fine, put your camera off for a second then, and we'll we'll let you go. Um, actually, I'm in the same situation, brothers and sisters. I'm on 19%, you know, the dreaded 19%. Where it goes 19 two dead. Um, so I hope you're enjoying, inshallah, my chat with um, comedian and actor Tezilia. Subhanallah. It's so... Um, fulfilling and interesting to see how different people find Ramadan and what their lives are like and the impact that it has, isn't it? And I'm going to have a look now at some of your at some of your comments. Have you got any um, 
questions you want to ask. Thanks, Salik Bilal. Uh, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless you all with Iman. Barakallah feek. Um, Zaid Zana, assalamu alaikum, uh, Lauren. Wish you all the best and same to you, inshallah. Love and respect from Afghanistan. Assalamu alaikum, Afghanistan. I hope you have a blessed Ramadan. Bidhnillah ta'ala. So while we wait for um, Brother Tez to get back, let's talk a little bit about the charity Watan UK. We're fundraising for food baskets and hygiene baskets to go to uh, Syrian refugees' families. And normally the families are around six people um, in, a, in a tent or some kind of temporary de dwelling. And I, I don't know about you, but I've run out of things the last couple of, uh, couple of weeks to a month. You know, you're watching things go down in the cupboard for the first time in a long time. And then there's that kind of, for us in the wealthy West, uh, we're feeling, oh my gosh, I might run out of tea bags or I might run out of coffee. Um, but if you've got nothing and you've got kids crying out of hunger, subhanAllah, that's, that's, a, that's a, a very different situation Allah has put people in. So uh, please be generous, be in the letter Allah and um, choose where you're going to give your zakat and give it, give it wholly, give it with heart, give with love to your brothers and sisters. So there's a couple of donation links that you're welcome to go to. That's why we're, we're doing this program, be in the letter Allah. Assalamu uh, alaikum from South Africa, subhanAllah. I was in South Africa, um, oh, last time, about a year ago. Salam alaikum, welcome back. Um, I'm, I'm going to actually let you talk now because I'm going to dive off and get my charger. Isn't this hilarious? That's so funny. I don't even know who I'm talking to. I can't see any comments, but um, uh, where, can I, so, where, can I, where can I see the comments? Um, I'm not sure. I'm, I'm not sure you can get it on yours, actually. Um, if you look on the, on the side panel, or is yeah. it only, only for me, is there a private chat live comments panel? Oh, live comments. Oh, yeah, there we yeah, go. I've got, there it. You go. I've got it. I've there got you it. Go. Cool. So cool, you chat cool. to people for, for about 30 seconds while I just go and sort this out, okay? Okay. Okay. Right. It's just me and you guys now. Um, Ramadan Mubarak to everyone wishing us Ramadan Mubarak in here. As Sister Lauren said, uh, please, please donate to Watan, who are doing amazing things for Syrian refugees. Either you can go on Lauren, uh, Sister Lauren's um, Just Giving page or directly. Uh, to whatdone.org.uk. Um, okay. Um, wa alaikum salam, uh, sister from South, uh, whoever, um, Athali Hug Kukame from South Africa. Wa alaikum salam. I've never been to South Africa. There's a country that I'd love to go to. Um, yeah, here there's a, there's a thriving comedy industry now in South Africa, thanks to Trevor Noah. He has inspired a generation of South African comics, so that's something that I, I would love to go and perform on that scene. I think there's a festival every year, Cape Town Festival, where comics from around the world converge. So next year, inshallah, if all being well, I would love to, I'd Hello, love to uh, do that. Uh, and Sister Lauren is back. Assalamu alaikum. Uh, so I hope you, you what, were, what were you saying while I was, while I was gone? Um, I took a real, a real risk letting Tez Ilyas Take no, I, 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 I completely behaved myself. Um, I was very good. I was saying assalamu alaikum to the person from South Africa. And I was just saying that I'd never been and I'd love to go. Ah, you she should get to go, inshallah. It's a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful place. So my husband's just said um, he'd rather not come in to shop because um, we break our fast in two minutes here in um, in Turkey, by the way. Alhamdulillah. Oh, is, that where, uh, is that where you are? Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, okay. I mean, I'm, I live in Istanbul now, by the grace of Allah. Alhamdulillah. You know, Istanbul is my single favorite city in the entire world. Mashallah, the way that they have kept their culture and their history is such a stark, oh, let's not get into politics, but it's a stark yeah. contrast to other places, let's just say, and people can use their imagination to mm -hmm. think what I mean. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah, Alhamdulillah, Istanbul is an incredible place. And if you've never been and you have the means I would highly recommend it. It is incredible. The way they preserve their history, it's a beautiful place full of beautiful things to see and beautiful people. You're so lucky. Alhamdulillah. Honestly, uh, we've got a minaret right outside the window. You uh, you know, I might, I might just uh, open the window for the Adhan tonight. Normally I stop, but I, I, I'd like to share the Adhan with everybody here um, uh, when it comes in two minutes time. And the Blue Mosque, SubhanAllah. Uh, going in there, uh, you know, interestingly, it's that it's your favorite city in the world, Tez, because I was um, in Soleimani Mosque, right, which is one of the great mosques mm. in, the, in the center of Istanbul. And some Parisian uh, gentlemen came in and I was speaking to people about uh, Islam and about the, the mosque. 
And um, I said, how are you finding it? They said, we're from Paris and Istanbul is much better. I said, you're kidding me. Now, Parisians are very proud of their city. Okay, I, I lived in France for six years. They're very proud of their city. He said, it's dirty, it's full of drunks here. And what was he admiring? He was admiring those elements of, of cleanliness and good behavior that come from our Dean actually. So we're picking up litter, keeping the place clean, looking after the cats. Does anybody, does anybody out there know about the cats of Istanbul? Allahu Akbar, you really I, should. I, when I was there, I got, I got followed by, when I was there, I got followed by a stray dog who was very, very scary. And he just followed me and my friend for ages. I just wouldn't leave us alone to the point where we had to duck into a hotel. He kept walking at other people really aggressively yeah. who walked past us thinking they were gonna harm us, but they're just walking past us. And I was so scared of this dog He's a stray dog, right? I mean, I don't wish it any harm, but it might be carrying certain things. I don't want to get bit from it. And I'm not naturally a dog person anyway. So at some point I'd like duck into a hotel and for half an hour that dog waited outside until eventually it left. Poor little thing, it loved you. We, it loved we, fed you. It. we fed it as well, but it just, it wouldn't leave us alone. Oh, do you think so everybody so what you should know now guys and we're, we're going to, to go on to talk about what in a, in a second Tez you and me inshallah but be in the letter Allah do our charity and get our good deeds inshallah Jazakallah to my husband um, uh, the dogs by the way the dogs are all tagged and chipped when you come to Istanbul and they all live outside and they're not violent at all and none of them have rabies so so next time you come they the, now what's been funny is with the lockdown People haven't been on the streets for four days at a time. The dogs are now running Istanbul. Brothers and sisters, I'm telling you, they're barking at people. They're like, what are you guys doing back? This is our hood now. You don't, live, <laughs> you don't, you don't run things anymore. So it's kind of like a bit like Planet That's of the amazing. Apes. It's Planet of the Dogs now in Istanbul, you know? Uh, That's see amazing. The <laughs> Alhamdulillah. Um, we're gonna we're gonna wrap up in about fifteen minutes, but we want we want to do some good deeds and encourage people to find out more about um, what an org UK. But I really want you to share some of your thoughts, Tez, inshallah, on gratitude, deeper meanings, any du'as that you like to make, um, because people know know you as a public figure, but they don't know you as a as we are. We're all the stripped down believers who whose stomach rumbles, who cry to Allah and, and, and have our needs and wants that we ask in Ramadan. Um, talk to us about, about that side of you. Well, you know, there's a period of my life where I've, I've always believed, I've always been, uh, shukr alhamdulillah, I've always been a firm believer in Islam, in, 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 our, in our prophets, in our books, in, in the oneness of Allah. But sometimes there's been periods of my life where my discipline hasn't much my belief. And primarily that is in Salah. So I haven't always been the sort of person who's played Salah regularly or even once a day. There are periods in my life where I only read Jumma. Um, and there might be periods in my life where even that sometimes was missed. Uh, and Alhamdulillah, I found that actually my life is a lot calmer. I'm a lot more grateful for bringing Salah back into my life. Uh, Alhamdulillah, is that's that's the that's the blessings of Salah that Allah has given us. The fact that I, I am able to prostrate in front of my Lord so many times a day, like it is humbling, uh, but also it it is a display of gratitude to my Creator that I can do every single day. And one of my favorites, one of my favorite um, uh, th things from Islam is is the saying that you will only get, get what is written for you, which is such a powerful thing. It makes you, if you firmly believe that, you will only get what is written for you, not a grain more, not a grain less. It's such a powerful way of living your life. It will make you a lot less frustrated over things you cannot control. Because this is the things, we can control our thoughts not necessarily our feelings, but our thoughts control our feelings. If we're able to control our thoughts, we're able to control our feelings. We can't control what other people do. We cannot control what other people say. We can only control ourselves. And if you're able to live your life by, I will only get what is written for me, not an iota more, not an iota less, then you live your life in a lot more grateful way. You'd be less bitter. You'd be less sensitive to outcomes that don't go in your favor. Yes, there will be frustrations in your life and you continue to have ambitions and you continue to maybe rail against, against oppressors as you should. But if you look at it from all of these things come from Allah, whether it's bad, whether it's good, 
then that you'll be able to live your life most of the time in a more peaceful way. Um, Asad Jalil Ahmed is saying, tell us a joke, Tez. Man, put me on the spot, bro. Let me think. Um, what did the fish say who swam into a wall? Damn. Damn. Oh. There you go. Look, I didn't say it was going to be a good joke. All right, the guys put me on the spot here. That and is to... so not, that's like 1970s. I have to, so I have to keep it PG. I have to keep no. it clean. I've been put on the spot. You should be grateful for the joke that you received, Lauren. <laughs> not the joke, not the joke <laughs> that you wanted. I am. Yeah, you've made, you've made, you've definitely made us grateful for something. <laughs> <laughs> grateful the for, the, for the mute button. <laughs> yeah. You know, you know what you were saying there was, was actually really deep about because you spoke a little bit earlier about the uh, the thought of self, somebody who's a performer chasing. You're always out there chasing something. And so many of us now, all of you out there, are in one way or another, we're all aware that we are freelancers. Because at the end of the day, those bosses, something hits their company, you're furloughed, you're sacked, you're gone. All right, there's no such thing as, as, a, as a job for life in our generation at all, let alone the younger generation who live in the gig economy. Everybody's talking about a second gig and a third, you know, you know whereas Tezilias, you're literally gigging. So, you, so you've got one little tour and then mm, scrabbling. So how would you actually implement? Because, it's, because we, can, we, can, when we, we can recite the Quran and we can read it. But do you have a plan for implementation? How would you implement just that? I accept that Allah to Allah is going to give me what he's going to give me and 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 what I'm not going to get was not written for me. Well, it's about, I mean, it's it depends what where you are in your life. I was at a point in my life where that was not the first time I'd come across that concept. It's not the first time I read about that concept. But it was at that moment in my life where I read it again and it had a deeper meaning in my life. And it was able to sit inside me and now I'm able to remind myself of that on a more regular basis and so get less frustrated at things that don't go my way. It might be that some people know about that concept, maybe they listen to it for the first time here, but they're not ready to embody it in the way that I was when I read it more recently. Alhamdulillah, I can hear the azan in the background. Alhamdulillah. So are you yeah. able to now eat something, drink something? I am, please, Alhamdulillah. Please, yes. don't, please don't stop me, let me stop you from doing that. You keep talking, I'm going to have this date, Bismillah. So what I will say is, continue to read your Salah as obviously ideally five times a day and or as often as you can. Maybe you need to, you, maybe you need to build it up to five times a day, but obviously that is the goal. Uh, maybe you need to implement for during your life like I, like I need to after Ramzan. Um, also continue to listen to lectures, uh, continue to listen to, continue to tune into Facebook live events such as this. Continue to read more around the subject, read the Quran more regularly, implement all those things in your life that will get you closer to your deen, closer to Allah. Because the closer you get to Allah, as I've been trying to do over the last few months, the more sukoon, the more sabr you'll have in your life. The more patience you'll have, the more patience you'll have in dealing with people as well. Now, away from um, our our deen, but something definitely that has that is part of our deen is meditation. I recently downloaded an app called Calm, C-A-L-M, on my on my phone, and it has a whole host of guided meditations that you can go through. Now, I'd never meditated in my life before I downloaded the app during lockdown, uh, or only a few weeks ago, but I've now been doing it for about 30 days. I've skipped a few days here and there, and I can honestly say doing guided meditations is so, so helpful. Actually, it's helped me concentrate more in my salah is that me be able to concentrate more when i'm reading the quran and and stop my mind from wandering off it's helped me be more patient with my mom with with people with other people in my life so guided meditations help you with mindfulness patience and a whole host of other positive attributes that are actually part of our deen so that is something that is a tip that I can give you for free so what so what's amazing is that uh, i was i was having a bit of a, a stressy moment earlier today because life doesn't stop in ramadan and that's the point um, with is with Islamic values and Islamic um, concepts that Allah gives us, you you keep your eyes op open. You don't go into a cave and practice and and not be with your family. You have to be a Muslim and practice these values ongoing. 
So when I had that that kind of, uh, you know, little stressors coming in earlier, um, I, you know, we can go to websites and we can find azkar. La ilaha illallah, la ilaha illallah. These are what, what um, other genres of faiths, they call mantras. And we have the best mantra of all, which is to say the name of Allah Ta'ala, subhanAllah, subhanAllah, alhamdulillah. This is the absolute point of dhikr. And this is the, the place that takes the heart to relaxation and contentment. And I think, you know, when we transfer that, bi'ithnillah ta'ala, into our, into our salah, try even because it's hard for us. We're not, we're not Arabic speakers, are we, Tez, right? Mm. So try and pick out those words that we recognize, whether it's Allah or subhanAllah, Rabbi al uh, Rabbi is our Lord. Try and really hook yourself onto those words. And let those have a deep meaning, inshallah, and let those take us to a deep place. Alhamdulillah. That is um, amazing. That's really good advice. Because it's not always easy when we're, when we're hearing the sounds and the beautiful sing song of it. But again, what you're saying with the guided meditation, it probably really um, it can it can it can be easy for easy access for people in that way because it's in their own language. But if we start considering that the words of the Quran are in the language of our heart. And let it let it really embed deeply in us by learning to recite by saying and even if we know three or four words subhanallah alhamdulillah la ilaha illallah just go around your business tomorrow inshallah ta'ala me too and we'll say those and see and see the relaxing place that that takes us to alhamdulillah amazing advice alhamdulillah. we've got four minutes left and um i'll take some comments uh, Aslam Jace, uh, Yasmin Osman, happy breaking a fast. It's Friday now in Malaysia, a few hours to go to Sohor, inshallah. Um, have you been to Malaysia, Tez? It's a beautiful place, mashallah. No, um, I have not had the fortune to go to Malaysia yet in my life. I would love to one day. I've been to Indonesia, where specifically I went to Bali, uh, and that is an incredibly beautiful place. Uh, but I, I, I look forward to, inshallah, when this is all over, and if Allah gives me the will and the means, to explore many, many parts of the Muslim world, including Malaysia as well. I mean, um, thanks, Asha Maravillo. So you've been on with us a couple of nights and uh, you, you raised a really nice point about sometimes we, we fundraise for um, refugees in other places. And she says, what about people in your, in your own country? Remember that Tez and I will be doing other projects as well. And we absolutely support the need for zakat in the local area. But we must also understand we're one ummah. The Prophet Sallallahu talked about the Ummah as one body. If, if an arm it hurts, the whole body hurts, right? If you've got a headache, you, your whole body can't just go running around and you're behaving normally because you can't see. There are spots before your eyes. And really with, with, with Syria right now, with the millions and millions of forgotten Muslims in tents now around Europe on the borders of Turkey in terrible conditions, that should be like a migraine for us. Absolutely. Would you like to add anything, Tez? No, I agree 100 percent. There are there are many amazing charities such as uh, other charities. Uh, and I'm sure Watan as well that do amazing work in British communities. We see quite often when there are disasters in Britain, such as when there have been floods, that actually it has been quite often Muslim charities and Muslim organizations that have been on the front line helping out in those communities when such things happen. So sister, I appreciate the comment, but please know that actually British Muslims are doing so many amazing things within our communities in Britain, whether it's delivering protective equipment to hospitals, uh, so doctors and nurses are protected against this disease, or helping all people, Muslim and non-Muslim alike, get through this um, where, while, while they are in self-isolation. So I appreciate the comment, uh, and inshallah, may Allah continue to give Muslims in this country the, the means to help people within our country as well as the means to help people around the world. And here's the reminder as well, Tez, that, that the people, our brothers and sisters, those children with injuries, the mothers who are giving birth in tents right now, our Syrian brothers and sisters, they're called guests. Do you know that in Turkey? They, I went to a refugee camp and the Turkish authorities said, I was saying, oh, the refugees, the refugees said, please, no, these are our honored guests. We consider ourselves the Ansar, and they, ha they are the, the, the muhajirun, you know, they're the people who've come to us. Allahu Akbar. So, we, so we, we respect their plight 
and we respect their dignity. And what we want to do here, inshallah, if you get the chance, go to one of the links and send food, send, uh, send hope and be the answer to people's prayers internationally. Um, final word to you, Tez Ilyas, inshallah, perhaps on, on the idea of a global community doing good. Yes, I mean, that is a massive, huge part of our religion is literally a pillar as well as the God. We have Sadaqah and we know that doing good deeds and helping and, and having and wishing for your brother as much as you have yourself is a big part of our deen. So we are one big global ummah and inshallah, Allah continues to give us the means for us to help our brothers and sisters around the world who in this moment in history don't have a lot and hopefully Allah continues to give us so that we can give to others and hopefully Allah in return gives to them and if we are ever in a need where we need something people are able to give to us as well I mean, Ya Rabbul I mean, may, may we always be in the position of the giver and Allah is the all giving thanks a lot Tez Ilyas for taking time out um, to join us we look forward to seeing you uh, I think it's next week we'll give you more uh, uh, more more space to develop your idea, inshallah, and inshallah. a bit more notice as well. May Allah bless you. Salams to your mum. Please say salam from wa alaykum me. Salam, wa alaykum salam. And, and keep looking after her, okay? Thank you very much. Thank you, everybody. Ma salama. Thanks, everyone. That's it for tonight. Uh, my guest tomorrow is, guess what? I can't remember who my guest tomorrow is. Uh, we've got Harris in the side panel. Who's my guest tomorrow, Harris? Is it... No, literally, I can't remember. You better stay tuned then and watch out. Um, it's great quality guests we're getting here. All for the sake of Allah. Stay tuned. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Thanks for your du'as.